the telephone dial. What does it do, and how does it work? In the early days of telephony, a caller would be connected to an operator. The caller would ask the operator for a connection to another number, and the operator would complete the connection. With the introduction of automatic telephony in the early part of the 20th century, a new way was needed for the caller to tell the exchange what number was needed. Various calling devices were tried, some less successful, but the most successful was the rotary dial. So what does it do? When you lift the telephone, it draws current from the exchange, as shown by the lamp being lit. We signal the number we want by interrupting the current a number of times in quick succession. Once for digit 1, twice for 2 and so on. The digit 0 will be a problem. Uh, we can't send 0 pulses, so we sent 10 interruptions instead of none at all. Early British dials used an arrangement called a slipping cam. But I want to show you the later dial. It's known as the trigger dial, and I think it's rather clever. Here's the one we'll be looking at. I'll turn it over so you can see the mechanism. There is a spring that you can't see that drives the dial back once it's been wound up. The speed is controlled by the governor, two small weights that rotate in a cup. The pulse wheel has ten notches for producing the pulses in the current. The screws hold the wires connecting the dial to the rest of the telephone. The switch contacts are operated as soon as the dial is turned. One silences the earpiece to stop clicks in your ear, and the other takes the microphone out of circuit to improve the pulses. The pulse contact is what does the actual pulsing of the telephone line current. And finally, the trigger lever, which is the clever bit. Let's wind the dial up to digit 1 and see how it works. Watch the small notch on the left. It grabs the trigger lever as the dial is turned and folds it back, making it drop into the first big notch. I'll run that one again. This time, notice the switch contacts are operated by the small black lever. As I let the dial back slowly, see how the trigger lever falls into the large notch and is carried back again to its earlier position. The trigger lever can now operate the pulsing contact as it returns to rest. And the switching contacts are released. Now let's dial 2. See the trigger lever drop into the second large notch and operate the pulsing contact twice. Now let's see it at full speed. And finally, I'll dial a zero. So there you have it, the trigger dial.